Well, I think we are seeing increasingly aggressive nationalism from two countries in the world scene. One is Russia and the other is China. In Russia, we've seen this extraordinary example of President Putin and his military forces crossing international border, taking control of Crimea, and then formally annexing it and just attaching it to the Russia Federation, which is an outright violation of, of international law. In East Asia, a more subtle, perhaps even more sophisticated sense of China pushing out in the South and East China Sea, in the South China Sea against the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, in the East China Sea, of course, this very unfortunate but very tense standoff with uh, Japan over the Senkaku or Dayu Islands. And these are flashpoints that perhaps produced by nationalism that the world community does need to, uh, to handle very effectively to keep the peace. Well, I think that a couple of these crises um, could affect markets and could affect international security. The one that I think is most acute is the East China Sea. There's no question that China does not desire a conflict with Japan and vice versa. And certainly the United States wants to see peace between China and Japan. But you have to allow for the possibility of a mistake or a miscalculation, perhaps even by a young military officer that might touch off a, a conflict. And, and you've got to prevent that by separating the Chinese and Japanese military forces in the Senkaku. The problem in, 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 in Eastern Europe is much different. Here, Russia is trying to reassert itself in a way that has all of Europe concerned, not really about a new Cold War, but about new divisions in Europe that Europe had felt were past in the past when the Cold War ended. Well, both of these crises in, in East Asia and in Eastern Europe really bear watching. Right now, they haven't had a decisive impact on markets. But for instance, should President Putin decide to go move his military into eastern Ukraine and effectively divide Ukraine, I think then you'd see uh, consequential major American, perhaps European, sanctions against major sectors of the Russian economy. That would have an impact on markets, on business investment. And if you saw any kind of conflict in the East China Sea, you'd have a similar impact. Let's hope it doesn't go there, but both of them bear watching. You know, I think the sanctions to date against Russia have been fairly symbolic. Uh, they haven't had a major economic impact because they've been sanctions against individuals, against some of the polit politicians around President Putin, and also against some of the oligarchs, and they've been visa sanctions and asset freezes. So we haven't seen the kind of major financial sanctions or sectoral economic sanctions, for instance, that, that the, most of the world has been engaged in against Iran. All bets are off if President Putin invades Moldova or invades eastern Ukraine, then I think you might see those kind of sanctions. You know, I think if you go back to Tahrir Square, these, that was a hopeful moment at the beginning of 2011 when young people were in the streets really demonstrating for freedom and democratic rule and for economic opportunity because of the massive unemployment there. Three years later, it's hard to find progress in any of the 22 Arab countries. In fact, some of the major states, Egypt's, is badly divided between the government, the military government, and Islamists. Iraq has seen unprecedented violence and terrorist attacks over the last three months. Syria is uh, badly divided in that brutal civil war. 40% of the Syrian population have lost their homes, more over 9 million people. So in country after country, we're seeing a Middle East in crisis, in fact, a burning Middle East, and these major countries are in crisis. That's not good for stability or peace, much less investment in trade.